Hello, Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all the viewers watching our session. Welcome back to NCRT's live interactive session. This is Simran Singh and you are all watching this particular session of English at PM Evadhyaya channel number 9. You can also connect with us through different mediums and one of them is our YouTube channel that you all know. It is NCRT official. So another half an hour we have a session of English for class 9th students and we are going to discuss about a foundation or I should say the basic concept of English that is grammar, time and tense, present tense and providing us more guidance in this session we are also joined by an expert in the studio. So allow me to introduce you with our resource person for the session. She is Mrs. Meenu Gupta ma'am. Namaskar ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, welcoming you in the session. Ma'am is a mentor teacher at Directorate of Education, Delhi. So if you have any of the queries for our live session, then here is the contact number through which you can give us a call. It is 8800440559. And specifically for class 9th students, a mail ID is also flashing on your screen. It is dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So ma'am, I think this stands a, as a very important topic yes. for English. Yeah, this is a foundational topic basically mm -hmm. and although it's not very difficult, however, students find it a little daunting to understand it because we actually uh, include a lot of rules when we try to yes. teach it. So today I'll try to simplify it as much as I can so that they don't have any problem while trying to attempt the question on tenses. And of course, I do think that this is going to be very entertaining and productive session for all our students. Thank you so much. See, uh, before we start tenses, I would like to uh, mention just one thing that tenses in itself won't be a direct question in your like question paper. However, there would be a few uh, exercises where the role of tenses come in. First would be a gap filling exercise and second would be an error correction exercise or an omission exercise. So these are two questions that would be there in your question paper that would require a basic foundation of tenses, especially from the point of examination. Mm -hmm. And from the point of language learning, tenses is of course important because it, it is the basic on which how you frame your sentences. So uh, let's move on to our PPT, we'll start the topic now. So before we start the topic, these are some few uh, very simple sentences, everybody can try and attempt it. Even Simran, you can try to fill those uh, sentences. Can you try? I love to. Uh, the first sentence, I think it would be, uh, I study in school. Yeah. And second is, I live at home. Mm -hmm. I play in the park. Yes. I love to sing or dance. Mm -hmm. I do not like to study. I do not like to study. So if you note, you said study, play, live, eat or sing. Mm -hmm. And in the last one, you again said study. Yeah. So what are these? These are all simple verbs and we have used them as it is. In the sentence. We, yes, as it is in the sentence. We have not changed anything about these verbs. Yes. So these are what? These are some sentences. These are some actions that you do in your daily life. That is a part of your routine. You do it in your daily life. Mm. And when you are using those action words, you are using those verbs, action verb words are nothing but verbs. So when we are using those action words, we are not adding anything to it. This is present indefinite or simple present as you must have read in your earlier classes. So if you notice in any of the sentence, I have I that mm -hmm. is who is doing the work. I am studying, I am playing, I am singing, mm -hmm. I am dancing. Okay, so there is I, the person who is doing the work, then there is an action word and then there is a where this whole action is taking mm. place. The, so in any sentence, so when we talk about work or action that is being done, we have to pay attention to two things. First, what action we are doing. Second, at what time that action is being done. done. Hmm. So tenses is nothing but it is all about time. Time. Yes, exactly. So if we I to ask you one question like time. Yeah. How much, how many kinds of time could it be? Can you think about it? Um, 
I could only relate to the three different phases of life. Yes. With which I can relate the timing. Uh, that would be the past that I had, yes. the present, like our conversation yes. is being done, and the future, what we will have in our upcoming sessions. This is tense. Simple. So, tense is nothing how we see time. Pre past, something that has already happened before. Present, something that's happening, like I'm talking to you. And future, something that would happen in future, someday, probably tomorrow two weeks after, a year after or some 10 years later. But that is something that would be in future that I don't know what would be as of now. So tenses, just like time, we have three tenses, present, past, future. future. So I think here we are clear. Yeah. So there are three types of tenses, present tense, past tense and future, future tense. tense. So, now, today we will only t talk about present tense because it is a relatively big topic. It is not very difficult, but if we understand the basic hmm. point, or if we understand the foundation, with the same foundation, we can talk about all the three si tenses simultaneously. Like, if we look at, I have written, on the PPT, I have written four type of present tense. Present indefinite, present continuous, present perfect. perfect and present perfect, perfect continuous. continuous. So if I look at first one, present indefinite. So definite is something that is fixed. Yes. Indefinite is something that is not, no. not fixed, yeah. but it is something that is happening generally. So that is present indefinite. Maybe something a routine. That is a routine, that is a habit, something that is in nature probably like sun would rise in the morning, yeah. sun would set in the evening. There, it would always rise in the east, set yeah. in the west. Something that would happen invariably, in general. Uh, suppose uh, I brush my teeth daily. So it's my habit. I'll brush my teeth daily. But there can be some days when I don't brush my teeth. Probably I or don't. Or maybe wait. something that is universal in nature. So this is that is why we call it present indefinite because it is not very definite in nature. Hmm. Second is present continuous tense. Something that is going on continuously that is something that is happening at the moment continuing that action which is not complete it is just going on like we are talking yes going like on i am talking. going on speaking and you are thinking yeah. oh she is going on speaking why so this is something that is happening that is continuing so if an action is continuing it is present continuous, continuous. tense third is present perfect usually it is used for something that has already done but if it is done you must say ki, why is it not past tense because it's done yeah no but something that has just been completed just very very recently that is why we called it call it present perfect and for the present conti perfect continuous usually in our syllabus we don't have a lot of relevance for this however because it's one of the tenses it is something we mark up moment of time and at that moment of time, if something is happening, okay. that is called present continuous. Yes, present perfect continuous. That at that moment of time, this action was going, going on. on. Yes, exactly. So now we'll do it like one by one. Hmm. So if you see the PPT, this is a simple sentence. He paints posters. So he is somebody who is painting. What is the action that is being done? Paint. Painting. And what is he painting? Posters. Posters. So in terms of tenses, the object does not have much role. Yeah. Okay. So we leave the object as it is. It is not important for us. What is important? Subject and verb. verb. Because sub why subject? Because subject will tell us whether it is singular or plural. plural. These are the only two things we have to pay attention to. So if we are talking about present tense, so if the subject is I, yes. you, we or they. they. So we will just use the verb as it is, like go, want, see. We do not add anything to this verb. Hmm. But if it is he, she, it or even a single name. Rahul, Simran. Yes, Rahul, Simran, Meenu, any name. So then we'll use S or 
es with the verb okay like it becomes goes wants sees. sees so we just have to pay attention to this and this is only in present tense hmm. not in past, past tense or, or future, future tense. tense so this we have to pay attention only in present tense okay so like we were talking about my daily routine so if i say i wake up at 5 am at what time do you wake up simran 7 am so you will say i wake, I wake up, up at 7 am 7 am so this is a part of your routine routine yeah so if you know take note of all these sentences they are again using simple present tense that is we are not adding anything to the verb is it present indefinite yes exactly this is present indefinite so present indefinite tense is used for things that are happening in present but that is a repeated action yes suppose you help in the kitchen you help your parents with buying stuff from the market or something that is your routine or you go to school by bus or maybe, even maybe walking maybe the profession in which we are working even profession personal that is not important but something that is a routine exercise what we are saying as habit is something that happens repeatedly yeah. not daily but very often then describing something that is a part of the given situation like in winter it is very dark in rainy season the roads are filled with water yeah so this is something that ho- happens very often so in these cases we use present indefinite tense or if we give instructions like the teachers give instructions to the student bring your copies tomorrow complete your homework so what is this this is all present indefinite pin drop silence pin drop <laughs> no silence <laughs> like this <laughs> so something that is an instruction or an advice to you that would again be in the present indefinite tense or something that is a universal truth like simran said like sun rises in the east or all the rivers will end up in the sea so this is a universal truth so this will all use present indefinite tense so let's see some examples yeah so i have a few sentences here we have talked a lot about present tense present tense present tense so let's see whether these sentences are correct or not okay so first sentence is correct because i have written it i live in delhi <laughs> okay okay for the next one i am asking simran okay simran next sentence uh, so in the presentation it says my friends are actually living in mumbai i think it's incorrect it's uh, it should be my friends sakshi lives in mumbai exactly because sakshi is one person so with the verb we we'll add s live yes uh, yes then second one yes. i am 10 years old i think this one is correct exactly perfectly correct third one uh, sakshi are 11 years old no it's singular so it has to be sakshi is 11 years old exactly very good then uh, the fourth one we is good friends it's uh, inappropriate we are good friends right and the fifth one i help my parents i think that's correct exactly so did you notice that in all these sentences along with tense the subject is all so very important yeah. that if it is singular we have to use the verb accordingly and if it's plural we have to use the Change verb it, right. accordingly exactly so it's not that difficult it is just that in the beginning we have to pay attention and then gradually when you when you are going on uh, practicing it again and again again and again it will become a habit mm. so you don't have to pay a lot of attention to it now this is something for your own practice mm. where you have to fill in the correct form of verbs in the given sentences so first sentence she dash to her office with a friend goes goes because she is one person so go yes. plus es it becomes goes so these are four more sentences i think you can try it by yourself yeah. and practice more you can even send the answers back to us so that we can check them next tense so we have talked about present indefinite tense now we move on to present continuous tense present continuous as we had already talked about it that it is some action that is already going on, on. for example it is used where 
something is happening at the time of speaking like for example please don't talk so loudly i am studying so at that moment when they are talking the person is studying so the action that is going on is studying so ing form is the easiest way you can identify a continuous sentence and if it is continuous you have to use ing so these are both inseparable when we talk about something connected with present tense example there are more and more people are learning foreign languages today when we refer to a situation that is more or less temporary temporary means that is something that is happening now but may not happen in future, future. like if you lose your spectacle that is something that happens to me i keep mm -hmm. the spectacle somewhere and then i'm searching in the Till whole house till we find it back yes so my son has told me to add gps to my specs okay. so that i can find them <laughs> for an action that is planned for near future so something that is there in a it is first it is it should be fixed and second it should be in immediate future that is we know the timeline in that case instead of future tense mm -hmm. we can also use present continuous. continuous so these are some examples you can see a new terminology here affirmative sentences negative sentences this is nothing but a simple sentence and a sentence that says no like i am eating food i am not eating food hmm. so if i am eating food it is affirmative that is yes i am doing yes. it and if i am not doing it it is negative so you don't have to get confused with all these terms i have written them so that because you find them in your books so it is just for reference we also use it as a form of verb like she answered affirmatively she yes. answered in negative yeah but like in 9th class we usually don't use these it is like at the higher when you have to show that you know a lot of english then we use it <laughs> okay <laughs> so these are some sentences she is eating i am eating they are eating so these are something action is already happening so it's yes so it's an affirmative sentence so this is some rules you find in lot of grammar books like subject plus ism are plus first form of verb plus ing and plus the object so if you want to learn by rule and then go to the sentences you can do it or if you can directly do the sentences it's good enough and in case you are using a negative sentence the negative is always used with the auxiliary verb like is am are and then we use it not and then these are interrogative that is if we ask a question it is called interrogative like police do interrogation similarly if you ask a question it becomes an interrogative sentence so what's the difference between a simple sentence and an interrogative sentence can you i think it's the difference of a question mark okay one difference that sentence has a full stop and an interrogative sentence has a question mark one more very small uh, present continuous maybe we use it for present continuous not exactly in this you can see the auxiliary verb the is am are would be in the Beginning. beginning yes yeah that's the difference so if it's an interrogative sentence either we use auxiliary verbs in the beginning or we'll start with do or does okay so this is the some examples this is specifically for that only the c is dash a lot of money these days c is uh, uh -huh. make is that correct it's if it's a present indefinite if i say please use present continuous then the cas are making a lot of money these days correct next is an interrogative sentence so what would be there why did he not help you did is past tense okay so we have to make it a present interrogative one yes so if it's continuous ing should be there right so help would become helping why is he not helping exactly why is he not helping you hmm. so be is the verb form of is am are yeah if it is written be so it could be used for any tense is am are was were anywhere next one yes dash you coming to my house today 
uh, are you coming to my house today? Perfect. So I think next two you can do it by yourself. Yeah. We still have around five more minutes. In the yeah, we can do this one and then we will be done. Okay. So the present perfect tense is used to show that a an action that is completed in the immediate past to indicate the activities to express the past actions that where no definite time is given. For example, I have done something that I have done in the past but I don't know when I have done it. Mm. So I have read some book, you have finished your meal but if you finish your meal you obviously know the time like I ate my lunch at 2 o'clock, we know the time but I have already eaten, you don't know the time. Yeah. So at the, that moment we are using perfect tense mm. where the time is not specified or to describe past events that have made any impact on your present like I have cut my finger so obviously you are bleeding yeah so or to denote an action that has begun in the past but will continue till today hmm. this is something that would be often asked in the examination you will see here a word since and for these are two prepositions that are used again and again in the question paper and asked by for this by this for the examination purposes by the examiners so what's the difference i'm just pointing out for your reference i have known him since 1990 hmm. that is that's the beginning point yes. that i first knew him in 1990 and I am still knowing it that after 22 specific years. specific year. Yes, just a specific moment of time. Mm -hmm. So I have a beginning moment, I do not have an end. Yeah. But in some cases there is an action that lasts for some period of time. So it is a period of time we use for and if it is a beginning time we are given then we use since. Okay. So this is what the examiners do to confuse you in the error. They will use since instead of for, they will use for instead of since. So please pay attention to this one. So with present perfect tense we use yet, so far, never, ever, already, since, just, now and several times. These are some examples you can have a look again when you look at the YouTube channel. Now let us practice the cat <coughs> dash all the milk. Uh, in present perfect, hmm. the cat has drunk all the milk. Exactly. Has for singular, have for plural and third form of verb is used. Simran is a brilliant student. So you also <laughs> have need to learn all the three form of verbs. Uh, second one I think they, it could be uh, they have not arrived yet. Yes, they it is plural so have. They have not arrived Yes. So next three you can do by yourself. It's a practice. This is something you can try and before so we, we have end, a mix of all the four. Yes. Forms. Now this is a mix. Now we'll see how much we have learned exactly. I dash a student. This one's easy. I am a student. I am a student. <laughs> Very easy. We all are. That's why we are studying these tenses. Hmm. Second. My father dash in the bank works works in the bank or if it here it was is, is working then that could also be the correct, correct. One. yes in continuous tense auxiliary verb should be there hmm. without that you will be given zero so if you are just putting working you will be marked zero if you are not putting the auxiliary verb so is mr need to be there Third one, my mother dash to cook. Likes. Likes to cook. Perfect. Fourth, I dash TV at night. I watch TV at night. Ah, because it is my routine at night I hmm. watch TV. We all dash to each other before speaking. Talk. Great. We all talk to each other before speaking so before we end i think do we have a minute or no yes few seconds we have a few seconds so i'll just review this present con 
perfect continuous. This is used to refer to something that began in the past, but it is still continuing at the time of speaking. For example, I have been reading Gulliver Travel for the last week. So for the whole week he was reading it. Hmm. Not continuously but on and off. But this action is continuing for quite some time. Hmm. That is why we have used present perfect continuous tense. So I hope I would I have been able to clear some tenses for you. If you go through this lesson again, I think you will develop a lot of clarity. See, English is something that comes with practice. Yes. If you go on practicing it, it will become something like a program in your mind. So, we need to read a lot and practice a lot. Yes, and I do think that you have done justice to this topic because I have understood it really nicely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers who have been a part of this conversation. And I would also like to share one thing regarding grammar. Uh, I forgot all the rules after I grew up. But because we are, I have practiced it so much, that whenever I see a sentence, I am able to get the right one. So I think our viewers could also try that and start doing practice. That's how uh, you get to know the, the different kind of verbs, the forms that we use for different sentences. So I hope today's topic was clear for all of you. Then you have to stay connected to NCRE for our upcoming session. Keep watching PME with their channels and stay tuned with NCRE official. Namaskar.